Patrick Guthrie, alongside Matt Lauer and Al Roker. Will someone Don't do the, the junior high hockey game? Yeah. It's like this. Yeah. You gotta make it real awkward. That's exactly how you he did. You have to have a certain amount of distance between yes, the bodies exactly. in junior high. Yes, yeah, like they say in Catholic school, leave room for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> anyway, there is a lot of uh, it's, uh, memories today, actually. It's a big day in music history. 35 years ago today, Elvis Presley passed away, the king of rock and roll. And as Mark Cohn says in his great song, Walking in Memphis, there's a pretty little thing waiting for the king down in the... Uh, you can't control what is coming out of your mouth. And uh, it's not what's in your thought processes, but you're speaking somebody else's verbiage. And, uh, and yes, it does take a long time for that usually to occur because remember, your brain's been mapped out, mm -hmm. and uh, so they've, they've uh, mapped out your audio cortex, you're cloned with another person or a machine, and so pretty soon the brain will uh, bypass your uh, cerebral cortex and be able to shoot out vocabulary that you have no intention of saying. And it, it's, I hate to say it, but it's pretty common with most TIs. Another 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 Evan well, a very, very heavy, uh, heavy divertation tonight. We had a very Darrison bite. Let's go hit Terrace Chase and those for the bit. They had the pet. Reporting from our Rock County Bureau at the Janesville Gazette. Thanks, Margo. Well, Wisconsin has officially joined 25 other states in a lawsuit against President Obama's health care reform law. Attorney General J.B. Van Hollen says Wisconsin is the latest state, including Iowa, Kansas, Maine, Ohio, and Wyoming, to join Florida's suit. The States claiming the exorcist saw Antisracho and Palais Brinritz by Health Urset. Yeah, it's a difficult title. Uh, it's a good, <laughs> a good day to, to die. I but I, I suppose it's because you had kind of a good day, and if you would have died, well, so be it. Is that it? That's right. It's, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's a great question. Have a sandwich, and let's go shopping. Yeah. <laughs> Die hard. That, that would have been at your chosen That's, time. Well, it's about, I don't, it makes about as much sense. He likewise took a grim view of the voice's presence, subsequently interpreting everything I said through a lens of latent insanity. For example, I was part of a student TV station that broadcast news bulletins around the campus, and during an appointment, which was running very late, I said, I'm sorry, doctor, I've got to go. I'm reading the news at six. Now, it's down on my medical records that Eleanor has delusions that she's a television news broadcaster. It was at this point that events began to rapidly overtake me. A hospital admission followed, the first of many. A diagnosis of schizophrenia came next. And then, worst of all, a toxic, tormenting sense of hopelessness, humiliation and despair about myself and my prospects. But having been encouraged to see the voice, not as an experience, but as a symptom, my fear and resistance towards it intensified. Now, essentially, this represented taking an aggressive stance towards my own mind, a kind of psychic civil war. And in turn, this caused the number of voices to increase and grow progressively hostile and menacing. Helplessly and hopelessly, I began to retreat into this nightmarish inner world in which the voices were destined to become both my persecutors and my only perceived companions. They told me, for example, that if I proved myself worthy of their help, then they could change my life back to how it had been. And a series of increasingly bizarre tasks were set, a kind of labor of Hercules. Brainwashing is repetition. So imagine you're sleeping for eight hours. If the government has access to your brain for eight hours, imagine what kind of brainwashing they can do on you. I mean, they have eight hours of your time that you're not doing anything else and they can just program your brain just like a computer um, to get you a mental health diagnosis so that the other people in the population um, won't believe what you're saying. They, they'll uh, be told like you're schizophrenic or you're crazy or things like that. Um, 
to allow the harassment to continue. When in fact, it's uh, a lot of times, a lot of the targets that I know, they're whistleblowers, um, drug uh, whistleblowers, uh, people who try to do the right thing or follow, follow, file a lawsuit against somebody or dated a cop or dated the you know wrong person you know per se because it's the wrong person if they're going to throw you in a targeting program if you break up with them but um, they've dated somebody who they've broken up with and that person got upset and all of a sudden they find themselves being targeted victims of testing are left dysfunctional and rarely are they allowed to work the strategy is to mimic the dysfunctionality of the mental illnesses and drain the victims resources so that they cannot find help or shielding there is no other word for this program other than diabolical so here's what the guys running the show are planning on spending their money on and if you look at the commercial IT R&D on a number two line it's a hundred billion dollars a year a factor of one million further improvement in silicon molecular quantum bio and optical then we have a category called Beyond Human AI, whatever that means. Automatics, robotics in the large, uh, holodecks, ubiquitous multi-physics, hyperspectral sensors, land, sea, air, space, and then the finally micro nanosats, GNC sensors, etc. What? Vitamin authentication. Look, I have one right here. Well, here, I'll let you hold it. Hmm. Would you like to hold it? I'll hold it. Okay. <laughs> So this, you guys see it? this pill has a small chip inside of it with a switch. It also has what amounts to an inside-out potato battery. When it's you small. swallow it, the acids in your stomach serve as the electrolyte, That's what they do. and they power it up, and the switch goes on and off. And it creates an 18-bit ECG-like signal in your body, and essentially your entire body becomes your authentication token. Yes, this is true. Okay. Electronic tattoo. So I, I'm wearing one here on my arm. Can we do we have here. a camera to get a? This is a develop. This is a developmental system made by MC10. And it has uh, an antenna and some sensors embedded in it. And what we plan to do is work with them to advance a tattoo that could be used for authentication. Now, it, I mean, the medical app. Yeah. The medical application. Does Google is now know everything I do and everywhere I go? Because <laughs> let's face it, Here, we, we just, like you guys, but you're from Google. Just give it. So, so this is basically what you see, what's going on in your cells right now. These are different fibers assembling, disassembling your cells. What this is, is this? A, this thing? is a, a, a molecular machine that walks around in your cells right now. It's called a kinesin and transports things. So, for example, when things want to move around your cells. They don't just float around randomly. They actually I, I like actively that. moved around with little machines, little robots, nanobots that power your cells. Um, what you see here is actually the, uh, an amazing machine coming out of these little pores which actually assembles other machines. This is like the factory floor of your cells. It's called a ribosome. It reads your RNA. RNA is you say in your book that mind control slaves were permitted any drug except marijuana. Why? It's an excellent question. The effects of marijuana on the brain are not conducive to mind control. It doesn't mean you can't be traumatized and put under mind control. It just means it screws up the programming. Because it actually opens neuron pathways in the brain. It, it expands thought. I'm not going to stand here and be, um, speak pro-marijuana because... No, because somebody I, be putting it in my car and popping me for it. <laughs> But um, uh, you asked a, a good question. So they can control my emotions. Yes. How do they do that? Well, uh, if you put a person under a functional MRI, which most people know about that technology, you can see the points of the brain that light up 
and act and uh, uh, classify each emotional state. You can tell that person is an alcoholic, or that person is schizophrenic, or that person feels pleasure or pain, happiness, sadness, and etc. throughout all the emotions. Now, what people don't know is you can induce that those sets that it, it's called a, an emotional signal cluster onto other human beings. So literally copying what the, another person is feeling and those emotions onto you. So when one examines the evidence and steps back to take in the entire picture, there can be no doubt that the vast majority of human beings live their lives quite literally in a socially and biologically induced trance. And it is due to this trance-like state of the people that we now find the world in such a degraded state. Therefore, the solution becomes clear. Mankind must awaken. <laughs> I'm sorry. The I was in a trance. Yeah, watch the drill there. And there are actually several technologies, there are at least four different technologies that can pipe voices into the human head that only that person will hear. You've had a rough year. You've had a year that would test a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Illness in the family. Mm -hmm. A breakup. This spasm of publicity about what happened in, from Mexico to London. It was pretty rough, yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird. Ah, weird. Hello. Um, oh my goodness, hello. Ew, strong brainy. Um, yeah, it was a weird time. Ew, I'm embarrassed, can we in covertly recorded off-air transmissions from the Bush-Clinton presidential election campaign in the 1990s, we can see that Bill Clinton was nothing more than a puppet to the puppet masters which placed him in the White House. Bill Clinton's demeanor seems to be similar to a person who is under a hypnotic trance. You probably heard about the voice of God inside your head. Is it real? Absolutely. You can hear the handlers or mind prison guards inside your skull as clearly as a cell phone call. This is the synthetic tele telepathy that the CIA has been working on for decades. Is this the stuff voices in the head and things like that? Yes. We've run into a few people that claim they got voices in their heads, they sleep inside tinfoil boxes, they do a lot of crazy things, it seems. But when they talk to us, they seem totally normal. They seem totally sane. Are these people crazy, or is the government doing this to them? The, the government's doing this to them. Uh, voices are very easy. Um, and the it isn't people imagining voices, they physically hear them. They physically hear, as I'm talking to you, my voice isn't inside your brain. My voice goes no further than an inch into your ear. No further at all. Uh, it's the electrical signal that makes you interpret how I sound. And once you've got this electrical signal, which can be a chip or a, lots of things, you can physically make people hear voices certain voices and, and it can be it, the, any conversation um and it, it can be anybody you want to hear it can be a soft angel and angelic voice it can be a god uh it can be something that scares you like a devil it, it could be anything. And then I'd go down the re road and talk to somebody else and they would continue the conversation because it was that same energy speaking through these people that it had hacked into. 
So it's it's intelligent life that literally can hack into people and it can use them as their puppets. While it what it does essentially, it puts you or your soul energy in a sort of box inside you where it feeds off of it and it stays in your body and expresses. So why we have so many murderers, child molesters and things like that out there. 18 fighter jets are spending about as much as 20 and ready to assist the 600, uh, 100 deployed over the announced needed. Now, it did depend on how the NOLAN emerges are and while the university or the UN mi mission as whole received support from all patteries in the hues of the, the garbage uh, of today. Excuse me, uh, I'll hand it back to you. Barack Obama retaking the oath of office. Chief Justice Roberts with reporters present readministrating the readministrating uh, administering the oath, excuse me, getting the words right, unlike me this time. Launched a high profile bid to be named Secretary of State, named as Secretary to Secretary of State Clinton's old Senate seat. Uh, Candy will continue to work her source. Sound better because um, I'm a truth machine. Um, Go ahead. I asked. I uh, is not an answer. Don't give me baloney. Um, I had a little bit. Just pay attention. Listen to me. You're a big baby. I'm going to go back to you, sir. I want you to tell me about this cousin, Stephanie. What? Make a beeline for the brain as soon as they are inhaled. Too big to pass back through the blood-brain barrier, they become trapped there. Nature.com, January 5th, 2004. Once nanoparticulates have sufficient control over a host body, they can then be remotely controlled to work as a GPS tracking device to inflict physical pain and disease to influence emotional states to cause memory lapses, to read brain patterns, and even to remotely influence thoughts. Scientists working at the University of Southern California have created an artificial memory system that allows thoughts, memories, and learned behavior to be transferred from one brain to another. Using nanoparticles and a magnetic field, University of Buffalo scientists have been able to make worms move in any direction they dictated simply by heating clusters of nanoparticles inside them. These fibers contain nano components which construct and install nano implants which the aggregate of, of the con constitutes what is commonly known as a biological application programming interface allowing for complete monitoring and control of all body and mind function in a given host you and everyone on the entire planet or plant here is a payload the zoom is I think one two hundredth another these are the deliveries through our blood membranes these are in all of us all our children, everyone. And it works in reverse. As creepy as this may sound, it works in reverse as well. Uh, control panel stalkers are able to see any images originating in the target individual's mind, uh, both actual images and fictional images. And by actual images, I mean, like literally, they can see what I see out of my own two eyes. They can see what, I, what I'm looking at out of my own two eyes through this image induction technology. Uh, but they can also see fictional images. So any, any, any thoughts of images that are in my mind. So if I'm, if I'm thinking about something in my memory, something that happened several years ago, and I have an image of that in my mind, then they can actually see that too. Or if I'm imagining something, there's an image that I'm imagining in my mind, they can actually see that too. And I know that sounds very science fiction, very crazy, but again, Look at Dr. Robert Duncan's book. You'll see that it's not. This may be the most amazing picture you'll ever see in your life. This is a phase two subject with a nano camera in the left eye, only viewable with the proper wavelength of black light. 
everyone on the planet has a basic set of nano implants that allows them to be tracked and mind controlled on demand. People who contract what I call phase two will have additional implants that allows them to be body controlled as well as whole host of other functions. Your body is turned into a robot against your knowledge and against your will. The aggregate of these nano implants constitutes what is commonly known as biological application programming interface. This camera is too small and can't be seen, but it can be felt. Some more thoughts and information on the ocular nano implants are available.